lot of sharing has happened. I was supposed to present uh, what our recommendations are before the sharings, but it is a good thing that the sharings have happened. Professor R.K. Agarwal mentioned about the work that they have done in uh, AKG in that university in their particular college. They started in 2009 and they have gone a long way. They have 100% of their faculty gone through the UHV and so on. So we'll share the presentation with you. Okay. And the second sharing was by SRM, by uh, uh, Suprajaji. She's also the uh, part of that uh, southern region team. So all help is available locally for you. What I'm going to cover quickly, I will cover it quickly, is some specific recommendations. What we would suggest for <coughs> uh, implementing this. Rajneeshi has mentioned this and uh, uh, Sita Ramji has also mentioned, you know, we are quite uh, prepared for the next step. So all these assets are there uh, for any new university to start. With. You can start with a credit course. You can start with a uh, mandatory course. You don't have to start with a, uh, you know, audit course or, you know. So those experiments have been already done. So if you choose to, you can start with a mandatory course. Okay. So all this teaching material is available. And the steps are very clear that first we include UHV or value education as an additional subject in our, with all the other subjects. Then once that is there, then we can slowly include uh, or incorporate these values in all the other subjects, slowly, slowly. Rajneeshi gave a good example of that. You know, so if we are going to teach uh, uh, energy systems, then it should be sustainable. So those kind of things will slowly happen, and they are already happening. IIT Madras has a whole uh, minor degree on sustainable energy, for example. And the third step, which will naturally follow from that, would be living according to the values. It's very simple. So we have the, we understand values, we understand what we need to do, what leads to harmony, we understand that. Then we develop the skills to live in harmony. And then naturally we will live in harmony from there. So those are the three steps. So in the first step, one thing is to introduce the courses for the students. But before that we have to prepare ourselves. The policy makers, the administration, the faculty members, all of them, they have to prepare themselves. So as far as the courses for students are concerned, there are a lot of courses, but in two categories. One category is fundamental or foundational courses, which every student, if they get, they get an overview of life. They get an overview of harmony in all aspects of their living. And then they can go into the depth with the advanced courses. So I'll talk about some of them. But to highlight the importance of these values, AICT has made a special provision for three credits for the UHV2 course. So it's no longer only 160 credits, it's 163 credits. Okay. So that's the sort of uh, uh, arrangement that AICT has made. They may also be offered, these higher level courses particularly, they may be offered as uh, uh, these value added courses. They fulfill the NAC, you know, many of the NAC criteria. So they are useful in that. So many of the colleges that are uh, applying for NAC, they will find that putting these as value added courses also adds to about 120 points. So you can uh, consider them there also. Now just a little bit about these courses. 
UHV-1 is a small 15 hour or 15 session module in the student induction program. Okay. And it is intended to provide a glimpse of universal human values like this. Today is a glimpse of that. In the session on trust, there was so much of discussion, you know. We had half an hour discussion, <laughs> isn't it? So with the students also, there will be lots of discussion. And you as faculty or your faculty needs to connect to the students, not somebody from outside or also somebody from outside, but at least we should connect. We should connect to our children. We can't outsource that to anybody else. Isn't it? So this UHV-1 helps to do that, helps to connect to the students and to give them a glimpse that, you know, what is being discussed is useful for us. So it's useful for me, it's useful for my family, and it is useful therefore for others also. If I can see these first two things, then I can conclude that it must be useful for others. So if a student is able to taste that if I live in harmony, it is going to be leading to my happiness. It is going to lead to my family's happiness. I can work better in a team. I can be more productive. If the student can see this or have some idea about it, they would become more interested in understanding harmony and completeness. They will be more interested to attend the classes. They will be more at, uh, uh, interested to attend the UHV2 program. So they will get that. That is another thing that happens. So this 15 session module contains all of these things. This, it discusses the aspirations and concerns of the students. They may find that we don't even know our aspirations. What is it that we want, we don't know. Okay, so they'll find out what uh, their aspirations are through this process. They'll be able to manage themselves, their health, their interpersonal relationships, the society and the natural environment and the nation, all of these things, they'll get some glimpse of it, some idea about uh, th those are the things that are discussed. Okay. All the material, a lot of material is available, presentations, the teachers, manual, recordings, all these things are available. Another module is the holistic health module in the student induction program, another 15 hours. So this module talks about health in a holistic way. Again, health of myself, the mental health, health of my body, and health of the environment. And if all these are healthy, then I have a healthy life. I am healthy. Okay. So instead of being uh, dependent on somebody outside, I can take responsibility for my own health. So if a student decides that I want to get up early in the morning, many parents will be happy with that, isn't it? You keep telling your children, get up early in the morning. If they decide that why it is important, they will get up early in the morning. They may decide to have a hostel wing where they get up early in the morning. They do something together. They may decide to do that. They may decide to have food which is nutritious for their body. In Triple IT Hyderabad, they made a mess. The students decided to make a mess for themselves. Took responsibility for making their own mess. So like that, they can make all these decisions once they have some idea about that. These two are modules in the student induction program, which is a, suggested to be a three-week program. Okay. And that if we spend some time for orienting the student from their uh, uh, school environment, their coaching environment. Many of them go through coaching these days. So if we are able to orient them from there to when they have to take their own responsibility. Now when the student is at home, who is making the decisions? But when they are in the college, then they have to make most of the decisions, many more decisions. Okay. So once they have a view of what is possible. 
then they will be more oriented to thinking about solutions, to thinking about their role in that, in those bigger solutions. So that exposure is provided by the student induction program. And after the student induction program, if we have a faculty mentorship program, that one faculty is there for every 20 newly joined students. They can be their uh, guardian, they can be their sort of, uh, you know, uh, local guardian kind of thing. And meet them every week, have discussion with them. So that is the faculty mentor program. And then also a student buddy program. Once the senior students are exposed to all of this material, they may be more willing to uh, help the junior students. In fact, in many of these places, NIT Warangal, for example, they find that more and more students, the senior students are willing to help the junior students. Their volunteering has increased, they're participating in many activities. So all those things can be there, but if there is a formal student buddy program, for every five newly joined students, there is one senior student as a senior sibling for them. So then it will make the whole campus like a bigger family. Okay. So you have one teaching 60, faculty teaching the 60, then in groups of five they are sharing with each other. They are not only teaching subject, but they are also talking to each other, you know, what's going on. So that is the student buddy program. Uh, that is the schedule of the SIP. Um, there's three major components. One component has to do with the values, giving a holistic world vision. The second one is good examples of that and doing it myself. So if they learn, uh, you know, a dance form, they learn an art form, they learn, you know, how to do rangoli, they do some activity which is helping them to not only learn something, but also to see how it is connected to the larger harmony. How those, uh, how that harmony may be expressed in a nice way outside. Okay. Many of these dance forms are for expressing, you know, these uh, important stories, isn't it? You have Mohini Attam, for example. It's a very beautiful ex exposition of, you know, the, uh, that story. So all of that, they can practice themselves, try it out themselves. Many of the students, they said, after school, this is the first time I'm touching clay. They were doing clay modeling. And it was fun. So like that, they, they uh, have this uh, second set. And the third set is, they get exposed to our department, each department. So they go to the mechanical engineering department, if they are mechanical engineering students, learn about that, what are they doing, the printing technology, the new technology that is there, they learn about that, okay. And how nature friendly it can be, that is uh, uh, over a period of time that will happen. Okay. The UHV 2 is a one semester course. So now that we have finished the student induction program in the second semester or third or fourth semester, you have a one semester course. And for that, of course, we have to be prepared to deliver it. So the student goes through systematically into the details of harmony at each level. Okay. And you have had a glimpse of it, so I won't go into all the details of this. Um, but it is similar to the two sessions that you had before preceding this session. And there will be a lot more discussion. Then the advanced courses are packaged as a minor degree in UHV by AICT, but as I mentioned, they can also be run as open electives. Okay. And these courses are going into the depth of understanding ourselves, understanding nature and existence, understanding what a humane society looks like. If we live, uh, by values, what will our society look like? What will the family look like first? What will the society look like? Uh, the explorations that have been done by different, uh, in different philosophies, what are the essence of these philosophies? 
they are all talking about truth, love and compassion. Right? So, if we are able to see inside them, we will be able to discover that for ourselves and see that there are common things in this. Most of these things are common, only the expression is different and we are fighting about the expression. So, if we are able to see the essence being common, then we can collaborate with each other, we can take responsibility. If there is something that needs to be, you know, changed, then we can help them. So, all of that can happen once we ref ref uh, sort of understand the essence. So, that essence part is covered in that UHV 5 and then the human uh, psychology, the health, the sociology and the economics courses are there. So, that is the third thing, the SIP and the UHV 1 is the first, UHV 2 is the second one and the minor degree is the third thing that any university can take responsibility for. And for this, uh, we have to be prepared. Okay. We can set some targets, some minimum targets. One target is for the UHV uh, 1 or for the mentorship first. So, one for every 20 newly joined students, one mentor for every ten, uh, 20 newly joined students. That is a simple ratio to figure out. Then one for every 60 newly joined students who can be prepared to teach UHV1, those 15 sessions. Okay. These two are relatively easy. And then to prepare uh, faculty for teaching UHV2, 1 in 120. So, they can be prepared to, uh, you know, teach the UHV2. And of course, the progressive colleges, progressive universities are already taking this uh, step of familiarizing all of their faculty members. So, that uh, can be done. And for that, there are several uh, faculty development programs, management development programs and leadership development programs. Each of these, like for example, the UHV2 FDP is taking the content of the UHV2 course and putting it as a workshop, as a, as a five day, eight day workshop. So, those uh, programs are all uh, available in three modes available face to face by the volunteers, available in uh, online webinar mode. Those webinars are quite intense. Uh, uh, Suganti ji, you, you have experience of the webinar, you can share uh, with everybody about how uh, interesting it was. And she was saying that they didn't let us uh, get away with, uh, you know, uh, it was one poll will appear, yeah, please. Uh, it, this webinar was uh, conducted during the COVID period, sir, uh, during, uh, sometime during 2020. And uh, the university had, uh, requ had asked all the uh, heads, directors and chairpersons to attend this uh, one week webinar. And um, the programs used to start around 10 o'clock online, completely online. Uh, but it was very uh, interactive in the sense that all of a sudden there will be a quiz popping up. Uh, <laughs> there will be a polling happening. So that was the first time we were exposed on how to conduct an online session uh, just when COVID started. So it gave us lots of uh, insights on how to keep the participants active, to be always engaged to listen to the lectures. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so, online webinar mode and now we are preparing for the self-paced courses one by one and they will be put on uh, some LMS portal. Uh, this is the distance education uh, 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 center, isn't it? So, they can, you know, place it on their own LMS. It is being placed on SWAM by AICT, so all these courses will be available, these uh, minor degree courses will be available on SWAM also. Morning session, lot of discussion has taken, lot of uh, information has been shared about that. It is for our self-development. If we are able to 
see things directly ourselves, then we can help in the team development. And then as a team, we can offer something to the society outside. So the morning session provides an opportunity to explore in detail, in depth, the core content. It has practical exercises to look into things directly. So when we are saying, for example, human being is coexistence of self and body. It looks nice on the slide. <laughs> so we have to see it for ourselves. We don't have to believe. We have, if we see it ourselves, then we are sure. So that is the morning session. It has a lot of sharing, a lot of discussion is there. Sharing is about all kinds of things, about my life, everything. It's very interesting. So I would uh, welcome you all for that. And as far as the universities and teaching institutions are concerned, I would just say three things. One is to set up your UHV cell for your university. This is very important. Then you will be able to uh, do the academic council, the BOS, and include things inside in, 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 in the curriculum and offer it to the colleges. And for that, the leadership development program and the management development programs are two important programs. So next step might be to uh, get all the principles, as you were mentioning, and uh, have a management three-day program for them. So that could be the next step. Okay. And in, then, of course, it will uh, you will include the uh, UHV two in the curriculum. Then for each college, each of the colleges, each of the teaching institutions to set up their value education cells. So the university is setting the policy, the colleges are implementing the policy. Okay. So the, co the colleges have to prepare their teachers, their faculty members, and then implement the, uh, uh, these uh, courses for the students. And one more important thing is that this is uh, not something that is, we'll keep to ourselves. We will share it with others. If we find something useful, we'll share it with others. So participate in the uh, regional uh, activity, in the national activity, so that some volunteering time can go for, for that. Okay. That will be quite en enriching also. And then for faculty, once they are through uh, the UHV introductory program and maybe through the UHV 2 program, then I would say they should start teaching because teaching is to learn twice. So when you teach, that time you have to brush up things and you get to know what you know and what you don't know. You know, so it's very useful. So the most uh, uh, the sig most significant beneficiary of teaching is the teacher himself or herself. Yeah. Okay. So that's it from my side. Uh, I'll stop here. And next, I think we have uh, Anna University, uh, Kamalaji. Thank you. <laughs>